Hey, what's up, guys? So in this video, what we're going to be doing is going over some of the most frequently asked questions about the WF-2850 and setting it up for sublimation printing. Now, this is the printer that I set up in the video, and I've already added assist to it and added it to my wall of printers here. So I'll go ahead and remove the assist and put refill cartridges back in it and see if we can go through and recreate some of the same issues that you guys are having and see if we can get them fixed. Okay, so now that we got our uh, sys removed, we can go ahead and install these cartridges and that's gonna bring us up to our first most frequently asked question and that is when I go to print, the printer acts like it's printing but there's nothing that comes out on the paper. So if you notice that nothing's coming out on your prints after like two prints, just go ahead and stop and bring yourself to the maintenance menu and go to your ink change or ink cartridge replacement, take your uh, cartridges out and do some troubleshooting. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your cartridges are primed. Um, I'll give you an empty one. The way these cartridges work is that ink flows up this tube here, it pulls inside of this chamber here, and then from that chamber, it flows down out of the chamber into this nozzle, and that feeds the print head. Uh, the thing is, we have to make sure we help the ink get up into this chamber first. So this is what a prime cartridge looks like. This is what your cartridges should look like. They should have uh, at least this chamber here should be halfway with ink. Um, and like I said, the, the thing is we have to help the ink get into this chamber. So what I'm going to do is fill up this cartridge to show you what an unprimed cartridge looks like with ink inside of it. Okay. So if you look, you can tell that this cartridge is prime and this one isn't. There's no ink in that chamber so that when the printer goes to get ink, it's gonna to try to get ink from here and there's gonna be nothing there for it to draw from. Here's what the back of it looks like too. The ink is supposed to travel up here, into here, and then down out of here. Here's the primed one. Goes up here, into that chamber, then feeds down to this tube. But if you don't help it get up here, it'll never get there. So what you can do, even if the cartridge isn't primed, so if you take your cartridges out, if you're not getting any prints, and you take your cartridge out and it looks like this, that means you didn't prime it before putting it in there. But that's okay, we can still do it after the fact. You just take this off just like you normally would. You're going to, oh shit. I'm gonna insert a syringe into the fill hole, like that. And then you're gonna make sure that your vent hole is plugged for this procedure. So we're gonna put that in there like that. And just like you did, be, or just like you were supposed to do, when you set it up, you're just gonna pull up. Okay, so you're just gonna pull up and then release. Now, I got my finger over this tube, over this, uh, the nozzle, and that's just to help uh, keep air from pulling up through the nozzle. Just pull up let it fall and you can see the uh, the ink is start to fill this chamber here at least halfway you also want to wait a little bit let this some of this uh, these bubbles settle and then you can go ahead and continue filling the rest of this up with ink so we'll go ahead and do that now so we'll take this fill it up and Go ahead and plug it back up. And now the cartridge is primed. So you definitely want to make sure that your cartridges are primed because if you don't, you'll have uh, the printer trying to pull ink from here and the ink doesn't exist because you didn't prime the cartridge. Now, you'll see a little air bubble here once it goes through its head cleanings and things like that, that'll work itself out and the rest of that air will fall up into the top part of this chamber here. 
uh, kind of like this stuff here. See, these little bubbles here are just air. So eventually all this stuff will settle up here at the top and you'll just have ink flowing through here. But at this point, uh, we're good to go. Uh, you can actually put this in here and you'll be good to go. Another thing to um, people wind up doing is leaving this vent plug in. If you leave these vent plugs in, it's going to create a vacuum and the ink won't flow out of the bottom of the nozzle. Okay, so once we got our vent plugs removed and we made sure that our cartridges are primed, we'll go ahead and run a head cleaning and run a purge file and that'll help get any air that's trapped in between the cartridges and the print head to get it forced out. All right, so we just completed the uh, head cleaning. We're not gonna do a nozzle check. We're gonna go to no check, click okay, and then we're gonna run straight into printing a purge file. Now we'll just go ahead and run a simple purge file here. This is one that I actually made, uh, but you can download these uh, from the internet. Just uh, purge file Epson and download any of these uh, CMYK ones, the four, the four color ones and then you just print it with, using whatever uh, software you use to print. Uh, I use Photoshop, so we'll go ahead and print this out. Select my 2850, we'll go ahead and print. Okay, so once we made sure that our vent plugs are removed and that our cartridges are properly primed, you can see that uh, the ink flow is starting to come up on the paper. So you shouldn't have that issue of it looking like it's printing, but nothing's coming out on the paper. So that's going to bring us to our next most commonly asked question, and that is uh, when I go to install my chipless firmware, it gets to 99% and then it stops. Okay, so if you're getting to the point where it gets to 99% and then it tells you that it wasn't updated, more than likely you update it to the newer um, chipless firmware. When I did the original video, we were on this, they were on this version here. So now they're on this version here and this 99 right here in the middle kind of gives it away. What it, does, what it does is it gets up to 99%, but it still writes the firmware. At this point, your printer should have restarted already and then it'll tell you that the firmware wasn't updated. Um, all you have to do at this point is pretty much confirm that the, the chipless firmware wrote to the printer, and you can do that by going into the maintenance menu. Okay, in order to confirm our firmware version, we're just gonna go from the, uh, the printer's main screen. We're gonna go over to settings, and click okay. Then we're gonna scroll down to where we get to firmware update. We're gonna click okay. And under current version, we wanna make sure that it's BL05K3. Okay, so once you confirm your firmware, you can just go ahead and click on stop here and that'll close everything out. Or click finish and then close everything out. And then you can finish the install by running the activation program. Now, if you don't have the activation program, you can get it from inkchip.net in, uh, in the soft menu here. Uh, of course, our model is the uh, WF2860. So we'll go down the workforce series here. Uh, I'm sorry, the 2850. And we'll go to 2850. And then you can download it here. Now, I already have it in here. So We'll go to the activation and run it. All right, and when you open it, it's gonna check for the uh, updates here, but this has the current version on, or the latest version on it. 
So uh, once we do that, we're gonna activate online and we're gonna enter our code. Oh, sorry. First, we have to select the uh, printer from this drop down menu. We're gonna select the one that doesn't say fax and it's connected to your USB. We're gonna click on activate online. And then we're gonna put in our code here. Now, if you don't have a code, you can get it from inkchip.net. Go to buy here at the top. It's gonna take you to this menu where you're able to buy these keys. You're gonna scroll down to the Epson Workforce series here. And in our model, we're gonna type in or select WF2850. And uh, when you add it to your cart and go to your checkout, It'll give you the option to put in a coupon code. Go ahead and put Gorilla in, and it'll save you 10% here at the checkout. So once you get your code, and once you do that and proceed to checkout, they'll email you a code. Uh, once they email you that code, you go back here, and uh, like I said, you click on Activate Online after you select your, your, your printer. You click on Activate Online. You're gonna insert that code. Click OK. And then it's going to tell you that the activation code written successfully. So once that happens, you need to turn your printer off by just hitting the power button. I'm going to do that off camera here. All right, so I went ahead and turned the printer off. We can click OK here. We're going to copy this and put it somewhere safe, like a text document. I already got one set up, so we'll just go ahead and overwrite it here. In our recovery code, we'll just write it again, save it, and that way, in case you ever uh, accidentally update your firmware, you can insert this recovery code into the activation uh, program here, and you can activate it that way without having the um, without having a serial number. So once we go ahead and power the uh, printer back up. The chipless firmware is now written to the, the printer uh, permanently now at this point. Okay, so another uh, frequently asked question is that when you know, I go to download the firmware, nothing uh, nothing happens. Now, I've never had this issue before, so I can't really recreate the issue. Um, I have heard that sometimes if you have your antivirus active, uh, during the download, it might scrub it and find that it's a virus in there, but it's it's not a virus. So some of the antivirus software might scrub it. So uh, you might want to try uh, disabling your antivirus. Um, if not, you can always just go to the forums menu here in Inkchip, and you can ask your question here or search for your question here. Also, um, you can contact them and ask them directly. They have a uh, support team so just go down to contact here and you can either fill out this contact form here or um, hit them with an email here um, with this email link here all right so those two issues bring the most questions when setting up the WF 2850 for sublimation printing again I hope this video helps um, I know it's confusing if you're good watching the other video, but like I said, they're using a different firmware version now. So uh, using this video um, and using the uh, forms and the search menus for help should help you out. Again, thanks for watching the video. Until next time, good luck and good night.